we've become friends in a strange way. I still love Justin to this day. <laughs> and he knows better than be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff. Puffy probably doesn't remember this. I even know, I know, I happen to know Diddy. Boys. Rihanna, did you attend any of P. Diddy's parties? Were you involved in any of the freak offs? Yeah. Put his arm around me in an uncomfortable way. But this individual who was nine years old at the time was allegedly by Sean Combs. <laughs> Everything ain't for everybody. We're gonna go through the Justin Bieber and Diddy tape at the freak off party and why is it just now being leaked? The biggest secret in the entertainment industry has finally been revealed to the world. Diddy going after and manipulating young boys has been a secret for a long time and now it's being exposed to the world. The youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. Now the FBI has been trying to get proof of Diddy with young boys since 2011 because they actually questioned one of his associates, Jimmy Henchman, after he got arrested and said, give us information on Diddy and we'll lower your charges. And they asked him on court record whether he knew anything about Diddy having improper relationships with underage boys. Now, why do you think they would be asking that in 2011 about Diddy? And who do you think they were referring to? Usher, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber. I've heard that there were a lot of parties, there was a lot of filming going on. Is that what you're hearing? So the individuals who contacted me purported to have three different tapes with three different celebrities, mm. including Diddy, and then a fourth celebrity without Diddy, but in a compromising situation um, with someone. Now, I hate that I'm gonna have to say this, but on this tape, it is Justin Bieber and I'm a fan of his and it's just disgusting that Diddy took advantage of him, manipulated him and used him in this way where most likely he was and wasn't even aware of what was happening. So what's going on with you guys? Are you working together? I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not, I mean, I, I, I think that we, uh, <laughs> we've become like, we've become friends in a strange way. This only proves that Diddy is pure evil and he should rot in a cell for this. So let's break it down and why I know it's Justin. The person who has the tape really doesn't want to shop it around. They really want to help give it to the, wanted to directly sell it to that person, but it seems as if they are going elsewhere. As you know who it is, and as we're moving through this story, and it's starting to really feel like it's unraveling, and you feel bad for the person, and we don't even know who it is. I really do feel bad. Now, the New York Post actually reached out to people associated in the circle of this a-lister that they won't specify who's in the video with Diddy. And these are the things they had to say about how the A-lister is feeling. It's triggering. It feels like a betrayal and a violation and it's causing a lot of issues. It brings up some really disturbing and bad memories. He feels like he was victimized years ago and is now being victimized yet again. If this footage gets out, it will follow him for life and be on the internet forever. The footage has been seen by the lawyer and it shows to have a younger male with Diddy clear as day on the video and she saw it on FaceTime. And I ended up saying, well, let's FaceTime and then you can show me. And in those uh, couple of seals that they showed me was uh, Mr. Combs and another uh, very shocking, I would uh, imagine very jarring for a lot of people, individuals in a, in a very graphic nature. Interesting though, the person close to the celebrity said that he's trying to ignore the chatter and all he can do is pray, confirming it is a guy. And we know that Justin Bieber has been fully pushing his faith for the last few years, trying to recover from all the bad choices, decisions, and everything that happened to him. And he does emphasize church and God a lot. So one of the phone calls was to another client that I have, who I know to have been a friend of the individual who they wanted to sell the tape to, and was very close to that individual around the time the tape would have been made. Now she's saying she spoke to someone that used to be close to the celebrity back when the tape was made. And considering the fact that she doesn't know if the person was underage or not, we could say that because the camera was so clear, she could tell who it was. This had to have been filmed within the last 10 years. Justin Bieber would have been 20, 10 years ago. And the best friend that he had at the time was somebody who did get in trouble with the law a lot, so would need a lawyer. And that was a little twist. You mentioned Justin Bieber. You know, there's been a lot going on. Yeah, it's definitely true. And I was dead a lot the whole way. I still love Justin to this day, but his team had their knee metaphorically on my neck for years just so they could keep one side clean. Told Justin them they could put that on me in his early career because if they would have put weed charges on Justin in his, in his early career, it would have been bad on him. So I got a call one day saying, Twist, do you really love this kid? I said, yes. I said, cool, if you love him, then we're going to take the heat from him because you can come off a little weed charge. You're associated with Lil Wayne, you're a rapper. So that does add up. And now it makes sense why the lawyer also would come out at this time since Diddy got denied bail and she felt safe to come out 
because she was worried about the other person on the tape. And part of the reason why I made this statement uh, Friday was I'm very concerned about the other person in the video. I was threatened by Mr. Combs previously. So uh, in my work with the Trey Songs case, um, I was told by several individuals, including a celebrity chef and uh, some other people who were close to him that if I didn't cease my persistence in that lawsuit and then the other the situation with Chris Brown, that uh, my life was in danger. Now, this is consistent with how Diddy uses force to get things done his way. He's threatened tons of people over the last 30 years and also unaliving people and putting hits on them. And I got a video about how he took out Tupac on my channel, which is insane. Now, back to Justin Bieber, someone close to him actually did respond when it comes to Diddy and how Justin feels. They told Yahoo the last thing Justin wants to do is relive or even discuss his complicated friendship with Diddy. They go on to say that he's finally breaking his silence to his close friends about this nightmare experience and the private hell that it caused him. I believe Diddy held this tape over Justin's head and that's why he was forced to be cool with Diddy in public. But you know Diddy knows something is up because the last time they saw each other was like four years ago and he was searching him for a wire to see if he was recording Diddy. Now on the flip side, this could be a tactic by Diddy to scare the celebrities that are willing to talk out against him. See, these tapes might not ever be released, but they're being used to scare the celebrities into staying quiet. Remember, she said they had multiple tapes. So this is getting out very quickly for people to know and could be that Diddy set this up on purpose. Justin probably doesn't know he even did any of this. He probably took some Ciroc from Diddy and woke up the next morning not understanding anything. When is that coming, that Lamborghini? We talked about this last he time. Had the Lamborghini for a day or two and he had <laughs> access to the house and he knows better than be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently not. Something. <laughs> Everything ain't for everybody. Diddy's thirst for power is disgusting to see what he will do to people to embarrass them so he could feel better about himself. But what I didn't know that Diddy would bring in young boys and others to audition and people would do whatever he asked thinking that it would give them a career or make them famous. And he took advantage of them for that. And that is truly disgusting. Puffy probably doesn't remember this, but I used to be a rapper. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs were minors at the time of the acts complained of. Now here are some scary coincidences between Omarion's story of B2K and the current people who are suing Diddy right now for being touched while being a minor. I was already developing myself to become an artist. We have an individual who was 14 years old. Basically how B2K came about was we were invited to uh, this New Year's Eve party. Most of these events and incidents occurred at New Year's Eve parties. The fellas, they were there and they performed. Although several of these events occurred at auditions, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry. Diddy wasn't even shy about asking artists to come to his auditions. I just didn't know that they were going for that kind of audition. So I'm out there looking for like young musicians to give them a chance, young musicians to have bes beside me and behind me that got, you know, that Diddy bad boy swag. All the musicians, I don't care if you played in the church, I don't care if you went to Juilliard, I don't care uh, if you white, black, fat, ugly, thin, whatever it is, man. If you got soul, that's what I'm looking for, for, for my band, all right? There used to be this house on Colfax that all the groups would come through, I remember. Some of this behavior occurred at private residences of people that we all know. You know, this house was like a lot of entertainers, Megan Good, Destiny Child, Black, 3LW. They're there with somebody who's a mega star and other stars in the room. Everybody used to come through to this house on Colfax. Uh, and the promise of being made a star. It's really kind of heartbreaking when you look at it because these people have the power to change your life. And it seems like if you're not willing to bend to their will, then you don't move on to the next level and become someone famous. I mean, you're talking about a situation where somebody is, thinks that all their dreams are about to come true and they think all kinds of good things are gonna happen to them and, and probably the worst thing that could happen to them happens. The one particularly, L.A. Reed. L.A. Reed, does that name sound familiar? And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now that yeah. was L.A. Reed's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but you were 13, what were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. You know, like, I remember he flew us to uh, Atlanta. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, Mr. Combs was in the tape and this was actually in his Atlanta home. And it was like the first time we experienced the W. 
in the pillows and the robe. And <laughs> Some of this behavior occurred at hotels that we're all familiar with. Lawsuits have been filed. Diddy, Jamie Foxx, Axel Rose, Russell Brand, Jimmy Iovine, L.A. Reid, Cuba Gooding Jr., and more. So it could seem that there's a lot of people involved with making these tapes and taking advantage of young artists. Are these alleged co-conspirators, are they public figures? Are they well-known people in Hollywood, in the music industry? Could you be specific in that regard? I would say yes to all of all of the above. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but, but the names that we're going to name are names that will shock you. You know, they had a conversation with us and our parents, and they let us know, like, yo, when we go to New York, if we don't sign the deal, then... But this individual, who was nine years old at the time, was uh, taken to an audition in New York City with Bad Boy Records. Other boys were there to audition as well. All of them were trying to land a record deal. All of them were minors. This individual was actually a allegedly by Sean Combs and several other people at the studio in the promise to both his parents and to him himself of getting a record deal. Diddy has proven to be super villain level of evil and I cannot believe he took this power this far. And sadly, others participated, which brings us back to Justin Bieber and who participated with him in these tapes and who brought him to Diddy. And I hate to bring it all full circle, but that's Usher. I ain't gonna stop you like that, but this is only a tease. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you, Island Def Jam recording artist, Justin Bieber. It's getting ready to go down. I'm such a fan of both of these guys, but things have not been going right. With Justin Bieber declining Usher's invite to perform on a once in a lifetime opportunity for him at the Super Bowl. You know what? Uh, they did work out with Justin. You know, I, th I think that it, it might've been the fact that he was just wanting to to tell a different story right now and i understand that but justin was seen performing in italy so it's not like he's scared of getting back on stage but we we did have a brief conversation and um you know we're gonna do something else in the future. Now that did seem like an odd answer. I don't exactly know why they wouldn't be close unless there's something wrong. And Justin did post something on social media that he took down later. A lot of people didn't see where in fact, it kind of mentioned that Usher betrayed him. This post was directed to Usher. And it says here, don't stop fighting. The battle has already won. Fight for what you love, who you love. Don't let fear and anxiety win. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I haven't believed the truth about myself. I haven't believed I'm loved. I haven't believed I'm forgiven. It's a hard thing for me to wrap my head around. I hang my head in shame. I wallow in sadness about the people who have betrayed me. Jesus has given me freedom and the pursuit of getting to know his character is never ending. The music industry wasn't really signing a lot of new acts. Yeah. Uh, you picked up on Justin Bieber. What did you see in him? Our influence, right, as executives give us the opportunity to uh, offer perspective uh, that is based off of our own trial and error. And this is what Justin Bieber said right after Usher gave this interview. So Justin said, I have been looking, seeking trial and error as most of us do. I am now focused on repairing some deep rooted issues that I have as most of us have so I don't fall apart. Now, it could seem like Justin kind of hasn't forgiven Usher for what he put him through, maybe unknowingly. We don't know if they were both used and manipulated by Diddy. But what's clear is that Usher and Bieber don't actually talk all the time. Even when he's asked about it, it seems like he has an awkward response. Because you did discover Justin Bieber, so you did see something. Yeah, well, not, and not just by myself. There was a, a host of people, you know, they say success has a million fathers and an orphan, you know, you know. Do you talk to him often? Well, we talk as much as uh, possible. I mean, me and Scooter, we we, uh, we stay in contact, and mm -hmm. obviously, uh, when I can be of help, you know, uh, I do so. That's you go through something to get to something in life. I don't want to believe it's Justin on the tape, but we have seen many pictures of Diddy and Justin out, and I don't see a scenario where he did not give Justin a lace drink. Allegedly, that's what he would do. I'm just hoping Diddy didn't pass on a disease to Justin because he was sued for giving a man herpes, and then 
Usher was also sued for giving a man herpes. Documents have been filed in the Usher genital herpes lawsuit. The male accuser has alleged the circumstances surrounding what he says is exposure to general herpes by Usher. He says it happened at a Koreatown spa in Los Angeles where the two had some kind of sexual contact uh, and says that Usher is refusing to take a, a herpes test. You know Usher? Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. <laughs> Apparently, this man is saying that he had sex with Usher in a spa in, in Koreatown, <laughs> downtown, <laughs> downtown LA. Usher, you know, if you don't have herpes, then why haven't you just put all these rumors to rest? The only thing that scares me is that Justin hasn't come out and just posted a story on Instagram or something saying, you know, there's too many lies out there, everything's capped, I have nothing to do with this. Like he's just been dead radio silent with the Diddy situation from head to toe. I do believe that when you're young and upcoming, Diddy's showing you all these girls in front of you and he's getting you hyped up, excited, like, yo, man, come on, let's hook up with girls. Here, take this drink. One thing comes after another and then you end up in a situation where you just thought it was like, oh, we're talking to girls and something else is going on. Next thing you know, you got a man touching you and you're not even really conscious fully there to understand what's happening on top of the fact that any of these girls could have something and then Diddy is making multiple men go through the same women so it's easy to pass something along that way as well. Click here if you wanna watch the crazy story about Jennifer Lopez and Diddy's freak off tape to hit the market. And also don't forget everything in this video is just alleged rumors and gossip and I'll see you tomorrow.